presentation. Will you stand with me, please, as the colors are posted? North High's ROTC unit. Gentlemen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arms, about, face, forward, arch. Thank you. <clears throat> we thank Colonel Grigsby and Mass Sergeant Draper. Um, those are some of their men and women. Gentlemen, members of the board, you have in front of you the agenda for this evening. Chair will entertain a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. The, the regular agenda. Be the regular agenda. Agenda. I'm sorry. And a second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? We're, We're off to a roaring start here. I think. <laughs> All those in favor say hi. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Dr. Jones or David? I called him doctor for like five years to make the out. We're always pleased each month to recognize students and staff and to uh, help with these recognition. I'm asking principals if they would come forward, please. You sit right here, Josh. You'd be in David's seat. <laughs> Yeah, they had Girl Scout me. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Board. Um, I am Carrie Stewart, Principal at Hendersonville Elementary School, and I am very proud to recognize four Hendersonville Elementary Cubcat students who recently attended the Region 8 Western Regional Science and Engineering Fair at Western Carolina University. They brought home several awards, and three of the students will be advancing to the state fair later this month. Please come forward when I call your name. These amazing students are third graders, Emma Grace Palmer and Caroline Pope. These two young ladies took honorable mention for their project, Chewing Gum to Concentrate. <laughs> 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 hey, Coach, let's get a photo there. Wait, 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 wait. Can you tell which one's one, Pope? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Does he know how to work? John will probably. Thank you, ladies. Oh, Fourth grader Creighton Higgins was awarded the Pisgah Astrological Research Institute Award for his project Flying Rocket. <laughs> Thank you. And fifth grader Lillian Johnson took honorable mention for her project Tasty Power. Lillian also took an award from the Physics and Chemistry Department of Western Carolina University. Lillian? Also with the <coughs> Girl Scouts. 
um, the students who earned the honorable mentions for their projects qualify for the North Carolina Science and Engineering Fair, fair held this year at Meredith College uh, March 28th and 29th. Also, I'd like to recognize one of our wonderful third grade teachers, Miss Ramsey, who was absolutely amazing in organizing our science fair and supporting the students. Thank you, and now I'd like to introduce Mr. Dean Jones, principal from West Henderson High School. Okay, Ms. Stewart, if those young ladies come in before we're through, we'll get them right okay. back up. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. In February, West Henderson High School's Falcon team and Hendersonville High's Bears team competed in the Asheville Regionals of the North Carolina Advocates for Justice High School Mock Trial Competition, while Hendersonville's other team, the Cats, competed in the High Point Regional. Judged by practicing attorneys, teams participated in two rounds, once as the plaintiff in a civil case and once as the defendant in the same case. During each round, the students playing attorneys and witnesses delivered arguments and testimonies and were quick on their feet responding to lines of questioning from the opposing sides. <laughs> Honored from West Henderson High School, if you'll come on down, Ethan Stepp. Ethan won the Judge's Choice Best Witness as well as two Star Witness Awards chosen by the students from the opposing teams. Also from West Henderson, Ari Sin and Leah Dorn each won Star Attorney Awards. Mr. Bobby Wilkins, principal of Hendersonville High School, will recognize the Hendersonville students. I'm very fortunate to be able to uh, recognize a bunch of students, and actually I think our teams, both of our teams are, are both here, maybe. Okay. Um, why don't you guys come down, and I will call the bears down first, and then I'll call the cats down. How about that? <laughs> so the bears, come on down. They're the bear cats, but we had to split it into two, so <laughs> one ended up being the bears and one was the cats. <laughs> so we've got uh, Julia Slawick, Madison Belk, Megan Reed, and Cat White coming down uh, from the bears team. And uh, out of those young ladies that uh, we have here, we also had uh, a, a young man, Mason Stallings, who won one of the awards. And uh, talk, we'll talk to Mason tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Julia won the Judge's Choice Best Attorney and the Student's Choice Star Witness. So, Julia, that was, that was you. <laughs> you gotta go get your picture taken, too, Julia. <laughs> and uh, Kat, who is a freshman, uh, actually won uh, the Judge's Choice Best Witness and the Student's Choice Star Witness. So that's Cat White. <laughs> and like I said, Mason Stallings won the Star Attorney, uh, but so did Megan Reed. So Megan, step over and get your picture taken. She won the, the Student Choice Star Attorney Award. And after Megan gets her picture taken, if you guys will go over and get it taken together, I think that would be great. So go ahead and go over. That's the Bears. They actually won one of their two trials in the competition. Thank you. Ladies. We've got form contracts up here, Bobby. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, the uh, Cats team. Now, the Cats team, you guys come on down. The Cats team won both of their trials, so you would assume that they were going on to the state competition because they didn't get beat. But it didn't work. Um, 
They, they, I think Mr. Smith, who was here, Jerry Smith was the person that's in charge of it. So Mr. Smith, if you, at the end, I'm gonna get both teams to come down. You come down and get your picture taken. But he, he even looked into it to try to find out why we didn't go to the state championships because didn't we beat last year's champion in one of those two trials? Yeah, so, but we didn't get to go. So um, it was a points thing and, and somebody didn't like Mr. Smith probably as well. But they did check on that, and that's why it, it uh, worked out that way. Um, John Moore won the Judge's Choice Best Attorney. John, you can get your picture taken. <laughs> Eleanor Palmer won the Judge's Choice Best Witness and the Student Choice Best Star Attorney. So, Eleanor, you are. This has got to be the baby. <laughs> And Nathan Lemons won the Judge's Choice Best Witness and the Student Choice Star Witness. Carol Kowald won the Judge's Choice Best Attorney and the Student's Choice Be or Star Attorney. Wow. Um... Jacob Bushy won Student Choice Star Attorney. Jacob. <laughs> Alabian Landrum and Karen Sanchez won Best Everything, according to Principal Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all get your picture taken as a group, and then I want the Bearcats to come down and get their picture taken as a group. <laughs> Madison, you were also in that group with Fabian and Karen. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Y'all stand together. Don't just <laughs> get close. Short in the front. I'm going to reintroduce Mr. Dean Jones to come back up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. The next recognitions will be students from West Henderson and East Henderson who participated in the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards and were regional gold key winners. First, from West Henderson, uh, if Annalise Wilkins will come down. Annalise, you can bring your parents if you wish. Get in the photo with you. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, you can carry her. <laughs> That's a great name, Mr. Jones. <laughs> uh, Annalise Wilkins uh, won a regional gold key for poetry in the 2015 Scholastic and Writing Awards for her works Cigarettes Don't Spoil, Everyday Anxieties, Elements, and Little. Hmm. Uh, East Tennerson will be recognized next, Mr. Scott Rhodes, principal of East Tennerson. Good evening. At East Tennerson High School, uh, we were fortunate to have three students. Uh, Lucy Campbell won a gold key in painting for her work entitled Beards. Sheridan Minch won a gold key in drawing and illustration for her work Casey. And Michaela Orr won a gold key in painting for her work entitled Birds and Stars and a gold key in drawing and illustration for her work, Twisted Sister. Lucy and Michaela were not able to be with us tonight. They are at the Yaw County Orchestra practice. Uh, so I'd like to call down Sheridan Minch. Sheridan, if you'll come on down. Congratulations, Sheridan. <laughs> and Mom and Dad, come on down with them. <laughs> Mr. and Miss Minch, if you come down, let's get your picture made with her as well. Daddy didn't care. Mom's all time. He's a natural. And as always, go Eagles. Next up is Mr. <laughs> Chad Alton, principal at Mills River Elementary. 
Thank you. It's my pleasure tonight to recognize Audrey Hood, a fifth grader at Mills River, Mills River School. Audrey, if you'll come on down, if your dad wants to come with you. Audrey won first place in the Daughters of the American Revolution American History Essay Contest with her creative take on how a child entering the United States would perceive Ellis Island. The contest challenged students to write the essay from the perspective of a child writing to his or her cousin who had never heard of Ellis Island. The writing prompt was in recognition of the 125th anniversary of the Immigration Inspection Station. Congratulations, Audrey. Also, my pleasure to introduce to you for the first time, Mr. Dean Jones. <laughs> first time you introduced Mr. him. Right? <laughs> now we'd like to recognize some of our staff from uh, Henderson County Public Schools. First, I would like to uh, introduce Miss Kelly King. Uh, Miss King, if you'll come down with your husband, Tom, <laughs> who is also a teacher at West Henderson. Uh, Miss King is our visual art teacher. Mr. King is um, an English teacher. Miss King has been named the Slater Family Honored Educator for 2015 and 16. Wow. The Slater Family Honored Educator Scholarship pays tribute to all of the Slater family members dedicated to educational careers, and each year an exemplary public school teacher from Henderson or Jackson County is chosen for the scholarship. As this year's recipient, Miss King will attend the North Carolina Center for Advancement of Teaching of her choosing, bring your own technology, digital learning for free, and will also receive $250 for use in her classroom. Congratulations. <laughs> Next recognition will be by Superintendent Jones. I would like to rec recognize two staff members, and one's not here, but I do want to go ahead and mention uh, Molly McGowan is our new public information officer. And before Molly started work with us, she worked with the Times News where she won a Division Education Reporting Award uh, for the story she did on <coughs> more kids living in poverty. So when you see Molly, just let her know how much we appreciate her and congratulations on the North Carolina Press Association 2014 Award. Hold on to that one. The next one I want to recognize is Dr. Kathy Revis. And Dr. Revis, if you would come forward. Uh, Anderson County Public Schools Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Revis, has been selected as the 2015 Western Regional <laughs> Central Office Administrator by WATCH by the North Carolina Association for Middle Level Educations. She'll be recognized at the North Carolina Association's conference, uh, and she'll be in Greensboro to attend that conference and receive her award on March 15th. I think those are Miss Stewart's. Here, did you have some? I didn't see her. Ms. Smith, are, are, you, are your students going to stay and support John? John's <laughs> getting ready to do a presentation. Did you know that? He's going to do a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> John, aren't you going to do a presentation? Come on up, John. We're going to bring some chairs up here. I didn't want y'all to lead John out. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. John Bryant to make this introduction. Is that Jan's daughter? Yes, Maggie. The second. senior. The purple Her. sweater. Dear Lord, you know how that makes you, how old that makes you feel? Yeah. I know how old it makes me feel. <laughs> Man. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Jones, and uh, members of the board, thank you so very much. We are in for a very special treat this evening as we have student leaders from each of our six high schools to share a little bit with us today. We're going to ask them to come to the podium in just a moment and share just a few minutes about the amazing things that are taking place at each of their schools. We are very fortunate each month to spend a little bit of time with our student leaders as they are able to share with us as a senior staff 
and each other the work that's being done in each of our high schools around this school system and we so enjoy those opportunities for them to share that we wanted to share that with you so we're going to begin in order at this time and first welcome our student leaders from Balfour Education Center and make our way through the school system at this time good afternoon I am Michael Stills and, and I am Jacob Fraze uh, we are members of the Balfour Education Center uh, Leadership Committee, and we were just wanting to go over some things that we've been doing at Balfour. So uh, this past Thanksgiving, we had a, a big Thanksgiving meal that was provided and cooked by school faculty and staff. We fed over 200 people um, on that meal, and it was pretty successful. And also for Veterans Day, we had a, a large barbecue. It was provided by Hunter Automotive, and we invited local veterans to come sit with us, which included uh, Sheriff McDonald, uh, Sergeant Ricky Bishop, and Mr. Chairman. Um, we also, for the nine, first nine week honor all students, we rented a few inflatables for kids to blow off some steam and be kids. <laughs> uh, um, I would like to add that since joining the student body at Balfour Education Center, I have taken a new view on academics. Since enrolling, I have taken leaps and bounds in my career, and I am now taking mechatronics classes towards my degree, and I have Balfour to thank for that. Good evening, my name is Haley McCraw and I'm from East Henderson High School and I'm the senior class president. Um, I want to talk a little bit about culture and legacy at East Henderson High School. Um, in the past, students haven't necessarily thought it's been cool to attend all of the games or to really get involved in school. And today, sorry, I'm kind of short. <laughs> <laughs> um, things have greatly changed over the past four years. Um, first off, the cleanliness of our school has changed. We know, myself and my peers know that the uh, lunch trays and all trash belongs nowhere but the trash cans. Um, <laughs> We uh, have much safer school. Uh, we gather in the gyms in the in the gym in the morning so that there aren't people wandering around, so nothing bad happens. And we have created a large sense of pride um, in our hashtag Go Eagles and in the formation of Eagle Island, which is our student section at games. And we grew from eight students in our student section at the beginning of the year to well over 75 students at our big games. And we have started many traditions that I hope to see continue after I leave East Henderson High School, such as the use of social media to engage students in what's going on and to help them make our uh, school spirit grow, such as using our hashtag and um, consistently high SAT scores and the celebration of academics like the most improved student breakfast, the honor roll celebrations and the end of year awards and also the homecoming dance and that involves all students from every grade level and the establishment of Booster Club Hall of Fame and Alumni Association. And also I would like to uh, recognize our HOSA program and our student body for coming together and raising $3,235 and a penny for the Leukemia, Found Leukemia Lymphoma Foundation and um, Last but not least, go Eagles. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Shanita Jackson and I'm a senior at Henderson County Early College. Um, so our theme this year was Be the Change. And we have three categories of how we make a change in our community. Um, we take care of each other. So an example of that would be super seniors, which are, I guess, our 13th grade. We have five years. Um, they mentor our freshmen so that they know what they're getting into when they come to early college. Um, we have a clothes closet and a food pantry. 
and we organize fundraisers such as a 5K run and a fall festival. We take care of our community. Um, we uh, do a habitat build every year. Um, we do helping hands trick-or-treating. Um, every October, the little kids will come around and we'll dress up and hand out candy. Um, we volunteer at Farm City Day. And we organize a team for the Henderson County Hunger Walk. We also take care of our world. We make Christmas cards for soldiers and everyone who is in service. And we participate in an Operation Shoebox. Um, but more importantly, um, early college makes change within ourselves. Um, and a lot of that comes from the staff who do not like to be recognized. But personally, um, from October 2013 to October 2014, my mother and I were homeless. And we didn't want to say anything about it. We didn't want to go any to anybody. But um, I finally broke down at school, had an anxiety attack, told my teachers. They reached out to the county. Um, Mr. Edney got involved. Ms. McKenzie got involved. And it, was, it came to a point where I didn't think I was going to graduate. Um, I was actually pretty determined to drop out and get a job and help pay bills. But I'm here to say that I'm going to Berea College and I'm going to graduate a year early from a five-year program. I'll graduate with my associate's degree in the May um, May of this year. And if it's okay, I'm actually going to do a poem that I'm just feeling right now. Sorry. We find more stability in cardboard boxes than in mailing addresses. Seeing everything packaged and labeled just makes more sense. Our minds are more at ease when the lock clicks on the storage unit. We didn't realize how much glass we consisted of until we heard the rustling of newspaper bandages and counted how many boxes were labeled fragile until we stood, frozen at foreign threshold, all burning sand and swallowed gems, gazing upon each other's pride, tracing broken wine glasses with indignant stares, and you hid your fissures for as long as you could until a crack split the tenor in your voice and failure spilled from your lips. You fear that being homeless makes you a bad mother. That residency solidifies success as if 445 West Dermot and 80 Hope Circle, Rainbow Motel and Southwind Motel were more haven than Hades, but it is not coincidence that mama and home are synonymous. It is not coincidence that I look to your feet for foundation. See, I find home in the depths of your dimples and the way they pull back the curtains of your mouth to reveal a grin, encouraged by the prayers perched on your tongue. I find home in the way that you don't always have a solution, but you always have an answer. There is always consistency burrowed in your arms, along with the determination to keep going. I find strength in the way that we compacted five years into 14 feet, filling every square inch with our it's going to be all right mentality. I find home in the scent of your work clothes smelling like 12 hour shifts, six days a week, seven P to seven A in health complications. I find peace in your vocal lessons and the way you teach me by example, how to cry and sing in the shower. Let the off tune tone of my tears create a musical. Let each droplet be sheet music. Let God orchestrate anxiety into a symphony. There is home in the way that you take the time to smile more for me than for yourself in defiance of circumstance in rebuttal to urgency, daring life to throw something else at us. And on those dark nights, when the doubts start creeping in, remember that home is not tangible. Home is not failure or accomplishment. It is not an address. It is not rent. It is not eviction. It is not dictated by housing authority. Home is the fact that I spent 10 months inside your belly, refusing to leave until I was forced and maintaining that mentality till this day. It is the way we seem to feed off each other, even though the umbilical cord was severed long ago. And mama, that is one thing they cannot take away from us. You still fight for me, shelter me from every storm. There is no failure in that you are heart, therefore you are home. You are all I know. For us, being home is being stubborn enough to laugh, suitcases and jokes in hand, and walk out into the cold without looking back. Early college fought for me and my mother to have a home, and if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be graduating this year. That's what we're all about. We're about community, we're about family, we're about taking care of each other and being the change in any way we can.
Good right, afternoon. Um, my name is John Moore, and uh, I'm the student body president of Hendersonville High School. Before I begin, I would like to thank the board for having us all today, all of the schools in our county, and uh, allowing us the opportunity to share all the great things that happen in our school. Um, being at Hendersonville High School has been a certainly unique experience, and that's something I'd like to share with you today. Um, at Hendersonville High School, there's a strong sense of community and pride that we all share, that the community shares, and that all graduates and alumni of Hendersonville High School share. And uh, that is a result of the strong and deep-rooted traditions uh, that are present at Hendersonville High School. And I'm very proud to be a part of that, and I'm very proud to continue a lot of those traditions, and I'm very proud to uh, make some new traditions. Um, I think some of the really original traditions at Hendersonville High School is that in the beginning of special assemblies or at the ending of football games when we'll all crowd the field, um, we all sing an alma mater, uh, which is really seen a lot at the collegiate level, which is certainly unique for a high school to sing, and uh, we've been doing that since our inception. Um, a lot of the other things that we've been doing at Hendersonville High School is uh, we like to do a lot of sales throughout the year in order to gain a lot of funds for the projects that we do throughout the year. Um, and one of our most successful ones would have been our carnation sales that we had uh, during Valentine's Day. And uh, we gave the students the opportunity uh, to buy carnations at the cost of a dollar. And uh, we sold around 450 of those. Uh, so that brought in a considerable, considerable amount of money. Um, another thing that the leadership class of Hendersonville High School likes to do um, in order to show appreciation for our student body is uh, throughout the year we have a series of blasts. So they're usually seasonal. So in the beginning of the year we'll have a watermelon blast. During the winter we'll have a hot chocolate blast. And we added something new which was an apple cider blast. And uh, right now I have 1,300 cookies in the back of my car for <laughs> a, uh, a cookie blast that we're having this Thursday. Um, so that's something we get to show um, our yeah, appreciation to our school. Sure at <laughs> yeah, that gained some points for the president, you know. <laughs> so, um, another thing that Hendersonville High School likes to pride themselves on is the amount of community service that we participate in in the Henderson County area. Um, and one of the real big projects that we're working on right now would be the Hope RX project. Um, that project is being spearheaded by the student body vice president, Cooper Burke, and is being spearheaded by a lot of other students at other schools in our community. And uh, what that um, organization's goal is, is to expose students to the misuse of prescription drugs in the home. And uh, it's a growing problem that we would like to address because it's certainly a problem that exists in our student body. Um, and another large project that we participated in in December uh, was the Henderson Helps program. Um, we work with the organization, organization Help um, that's at Balfour Education Center, and we work with Frank Edney and Ms. McKenzie. And uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to collect items um, for our community, and Help in specific is unique uh, because they collect items for homeless youth within our county. And that affects students within our school system and students that I serve. Um, so it made it especially uh, personal for me. Um, for our school alone, we uh, gained 3,000 items in total. And uh, we also gained a considerable amount from the community. Um, we also did a Bruce Drysdale outreach. Uh, when we went to Bruce Drysdale and uh, we told them what to expect when coming to middle school and to high school and a lot of the goals that we would like to um, like them to have and a lot of the things that we wish we would have known when we entered high school. Um, so a lot of the other things that I'd like to tell you that is unique about Hendersonville High School is the fact that we also have a symposium which is also seen a lot at the collegiate level. And a symposium is when we tackle a certain social or political issue um, either current or in the past and this year was the Cold War and um, we, our social studies department spearheads that. And uh, what we do is we have a certain amount of assemblies throughout that, in, throughout an entire week. Assemblies, we, uh, we do scavenger hunts throughout the hallways. Uh, usually we have a guest speaker that comes and speaks to the student body um, so we can learn lessons from past events, um, kind of put them into present events 
And uh, it's helped a lot of students, including myself, uh, really, I guess, uh, figure out what they'd like to do in college, I'd like to say, because um, the symposium this year uh, was extremely interesting. Uh, we went through the Cold War, and we actually had a uh, speaker who was um, an advisor to President Ronald Reagan um, during his presidency, and he came and spoke to us and gave us a lot of in-depth insight into being in a boardroom meeting um, with a lot of very important people and uh, really exciting students about history. Um, a lot of the other unique things is each year our seniors will paint senior steps. We have a banner drop during homecoming. Um, and something that's also pretty fun for our seniors to do is we have a medieval banquet and we'll all eat food and we have a huge pig come out and we'll all dress in medi medieval, medieval um, attire and have a lot of fun. So um, I hope you learned a little bit more about Hendersonville High School, uh, what really makes us great and uh, why I enjoy it so much. So thank you for the opportunity. Hi, I'm Ellie Caldwell. I'm the student body president at North Henderson High School. And at North, we like to focus on building our community from the inside out. And on the inside, we are trying to do more things for our students and faculty. And this year, we hosted our first winter semi-formal because we don't have a homecoming dance in the fall, so we wanted to do something so the kids could dress up and have fun and go off campus. And that was a success, and we hope to see that grow in the future. The students really seem to enjoy themselves. And then during Bus Driver Appreciation Week, we, our student council got together, and we all made goodie bags for the bus drivers with candy and little notes and even earplugs if those ever <laughs> came in the case. And um, we had a breakfast for them and gave them coupons and cards just to show how much we appreciate their hard work because they don't always get the recognition that they deserve for all their long hours. And then this Friday, we're having our Day of Change, and it is to honor Lisa Anderson, who was a formal former principal at North Henderson and each student is encouraged to bring in all the change they can and the first period teacher cannot start teaching until all the change is counted and rolled and so that gets kids pretty excited and then um, all that money will go to a senior at North for it's the Lisa Anderson Memorial Scholarship and then we also reach out um, during basketball season, we had a lot of nights. Um, we had Edneyville night where we reached out to the Edneyville community. And we invited back all the men's and women's basketball teams and cheerleaders. And we honored them during our game against East Henderson. And in our game against West Henderson, we had our special needs night. And we honored um, students in our EC department. They came and played games, and they really enjoyed themselves. And then we had the special needs cheerleaders perform during halftime as well. And also students from our leadership class have been mentoring students from our EC class. And we're training them for Special Olympics. And so um, on spe the Special Olympics Day, the student from the leadership class will go around with the student from the EC class and be their coach and pump them up and so it's been really fun I've been a part of that and you just build a relationship with the student and it makes that day a lot more special and also we are having our red ribbon day but we're calling it purple ribbon day <laughs> and um, <laughs> it is to like John said promote uh, drug awareness especially with prescription pills and we're having a guest speaker and we're going to have um, a banner where all the students can pledge to be drug free and they can wear their purple ribbons around to raise awareness and show their support for that. And then last but not least, um, our kind of big project at the end of the year, it's at the end of May, is Relay for Life. and. Um, I'm just really proud of that because last year we raised over $13,000 to help fight cancer. And that um, last year especially, that became very personal to me. And so I was just really proud of how our students and everything, we get so involved with that. And 
I just want to thank Mr. Shepard and Coach Moon because without them, Coach Moon's our student council advisor, without them we wouldn't be able to do any of the projects we want to do or anything. So thank you and thank you all for your time. Um, my name is Maggie King. I'm student body president at West Henderson High School right now. Um, so I'm just going to update you on a little bit of what's going on. So in the past year, we've had pep rallies, which is kind of normal, I guess, but it's not really normal when your principal's dancing. Um, <laughs> we also had a car smash, which raised money for student government, and haunted hallways, which were spon sponsored by our theater, de theater department. We also taught our students some new and nicer and more polite chants for the <laughs> football games, and that was called Student Section Revolution. It was a great <laughs> event. Um, in the community service department, we've kind of been, um, we've had a blood drive, and we have another one tomorrow, actually, if you want to come give blood. Um, we greeted elementary school students at Mills River, Marlowe, and Fletcher, which all feed into us, which is awesome. Um, we had multiple students participate in the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, and we had members of Pride and Junior Civitan go to the Civitan Pancake Breakfast to volunteer. We had some kids go and walk in the Christmas Parade for Henderson Helps, and um, we had had a food drive. Athletics-wise, um, our volleyball team was public school state champions. Um, <laughs> maybe state runner-up, <laughs> but who knows. Um, our football team made it to the second round of the playoffs at home, which was a big go-go. Um, <laughs> Jake Johnson was um, the swimming state champion. He just got that the other day. Um, and Savannah Smith was the tennis state runner-up, so we can't wait to see where she goes next year. As She's a junior, so she'll, she's got it next year, I'm sure. Um, Cross-country and indoor track made it to state and our spring sports have just started up. A couple things that we're looking forward to is Red Ribbon Week, as a few of my friends have talked about, um, Special Olympics, and we have a food drive we're about to start. And then also the Boyfriend, which is our school musical, is March 26th through 28th, so you can come out to that. And then the biggest event of the year is probably Haley Hustle. Um, we've made it a two-day event. Haley's up there. She is a freshman right now at Wake Forest, and she has muscular dystrophy. Um, she actually made the Dean's List last semester go Haley. Um, but she is the reason we started this. So this will be our fifth Haley Hustle. And it's a color run on March or no, May 16th. And on May 15th, we have a pig pick in so we can, you know, get the calories up to burn them off the next day. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see you all there. Thank you. <laughs> We uh, truly have some extraordinary things happening in our schools, um, and there is no message quite like the message shared by our students. Please join me in just thanking them again for sharing with us. That way. They can figure out how to. <laughs> Everybody figure out how to use the camera. Your kids at Sugar Life Food. Every message. Before all of you get out of here, you can't imagine how proud we are. We have students come talk to us every meeting. Yeah, yeah that's what we just said. Yeah. Or s sit in our place. Thank you very much. Thank you, parents, too. It's kind of hard to believe some of you are adults almost. Mm -hmm. Actually, all are going on next year. Just Those are the only observations I have. <laughs> any member of the board have any observations? <laughs> Public, that is. <laughs> yeah, he just said. Peggy Marshall. I'm going to call up some young people, um, but I want you to introduce them. Um, 
Right over here. And we got a mic that you can use right there, dear. Right here. <laughs> they really are intimidated. I can see that. <laughs> and this is Principal Peggy Marshall from Sugarloaf Elementary. And this is Riley Elliott. All right. Evelyn Choir and Cecilia Ledgerwood. You have to be her. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Riley Elliott and I'm a leader in fifth grade. I am also on the public relations team at Sugarloaf Elementary. I'm here tonight to personally invite you to our leadership showcase on March the 20th. We are a leader in me school and our vision is to build a culture of greatness by empowering leaders who positively influence themselves and others. We would like you to experience our culture and see how our students are having a positive influence. Hi, my name is Cecilia Ledgerwood and I am a leader in second grade. I am also on the public relations team like Riley. Here are some examples of the great things you will see at my school, Sugarloaf Elementary. In my school, we work on leadership and the seven habits. Here is a list of leadership practices we have at school. All students have a leadership role in class or school-wise. I am the mail carrier. I have... We have cub clubs every other Friday. I am in Plato Club. We do food drives and blank a blanket drive each year. We also raise money for Pisca and Mitchell at the Nature Center. We get pride points for showing leadership in the classroom, school, and community. Names are pulled every Friday morning by Miss Marshall and the student morning announcers. Winning students get prize. We have pep rallies where we get recognized for terrific kid and A, A and A, B honor roll. Ter perfect attendance, meeting our personal and academic goals, and just for being a c good citizen. We track our personal and academic goals in leadership notebooks. We shared them during student-led conferences. Every child at Sugarloaf Elementary is a leader. Please join us on March 20th and help us celebrate. We have personal invitations for you. Hi, my name is Evelyn Aguirre and I'm and I'm a second grade leader. I just wanted to tell you to respect other people and encourage them to whatever they want to be. Always put them first and you last. Be you no matter what. Almost forgot about the I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. One more thing. Thank you for this opportunity to speak tonight. Don't forget. We are Sugarloaf. Hear us roar. Roar! <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Marshall. <laughs> Don Gilmer.
I would rank them out is for no books. Sir, have you talked with the school principal at all? Okay, we will try. We'll get your info, and we will make sure the school principal of those schools gives you a call. Players up, what you? That's a better answer than I got when I called the school board. All right, sir. We will. When I called the school board. They said that's the way it is. Well, I'm sorry that that's occurred, sir, because that's not the way it is. We will. We will get some. We will get someone to uh, get in touch with you. Your children, grandchildren, go to Edneyville? He goes to Edneyville, Apple Valley, and North Henderson. Okay. Someone will get back to you, sir. Thank you. Miss Ritchie. Good to see you, ma'am. I'm here today as a citizen and lifelong supporter of public education to state that I do not agree with school board policy that still, after 19 years, separates the student population of the city into two elementary schools less than one mile apart. For two reasons, it has served well neither Bruce Drysdale Elementary School Hendersonville Elementary School or the county. It continues to deprive Bruce Drysdale Elementary the district it should serve. While I acknowledge that the initial reason for the establishment of Hendersonville Elementary was not racial in purpose, it eventually allowed parents the ability to consider race as a criteria for their choice in schools. The population of the two schools still clearly reflects racial segregation. The second reason is that establishing a special school that allows students from the county to attend Hendersonville High School sends the clear message that Hendersonville High School is somehow more special and more valuable than the other high schools in the county. Why does no other high school have a special feeder school? It took decades for our community to step beyond racial barriers and within the city, it took so few years to go back to where we came from. I know because I was there and I watched it every step of the way for 19 years. Board members, we have our own Edmund Pettus Bridge. Not a bridge to hatred, but a barrier to brotherhood. If you would, I would ask that it be put in the public record. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ritchie. Oh, <clears throat> Easy. <laughs> Members of the board, um, Bo, that's all the yellow sheets I had. He's getting the information. Yeah, there aren't any more out there. Um, consent agenda is in front of you. Chair will intend a motion that comes with the, super with the superintendent's <laughs> recommendation for approval. Well, approve I have to look now, the other way. Now I move that we approve the consent agenda. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, before uh, Mr. Caldwell comes up, I do want to make an introduction. We're uh, glad to have Mr. Jeremy Gibbs uh, in the audience. Uh, Mr. Gibbs, a uh, former student here in Henderson County, now uh, is the HR director over in Transylvania, and we always try to help those folks from Transylvania out as best we can. So, uh, Did you lock the doors? Uh, he can't go back home. Yeah. But Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy was one of my students when I was a principal. So. Oh, and he, and he still survived. That's good. But we're glad to have we're in Mr. Cobble. That is correct. So we're glad to have you here. And we, we do appreciate Jeremy spent uh, 
his uh, educational career working uh, also in Wake County, uh, and, and he had to get back to the mountains. So we're glad, to, glad he's back this way. So um, now Mr. Caldwell, Policy 727. Second reading. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Board. I bring to you for second reading uh, the injury and loss prevention. Just a little review about this policy. The uh, State Board of Education is requiring each LEA to approve such a policy. And the, this policy basically talks about employee safety, developing a leadership team, looking at your system, looking at the schools, uh, at any type of, of workers' comp injuries, what caused it, and how we can do things better. Mm. So I bring to you for second reading, this policy has been approved by legal counsel. Chair will entertain a motion as to approval, second reading, and pa passing of the policy. I move we approve the second reading of policy 727, injury and loss prevention. Second. Any discussion? Pretty straightforward. Mm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That's it for old business, huh? No new business? Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Caldwell is going to update us on calendars, and hopefully we've missed all the days we're going to miss. No, don't say that. No, 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 no. say that. <laughs> <laughs> we've been there. <laughs> Every time we're we going do. for spring. <laughs> I'd like to start with the traditional calendar. Uh, we have public schools. We have missed five days, so therefore we five student days. In the traditional calendar, we added two days at the end of the calendar, so right now the last day for students will be 12th. That we, we stay there. Mr. Caldwell, let me just say there, too, if you have questions, we will go ahead. That will be graduation date. Well, so Friday night. So if you have folks asking, that Friday, uh, that Friday <laughs> June 12th, Friday will be graduation. <laughs> I'll say by the 12th. <laughs> yeah. There was a work day well, on March the 27th that was supposed to be the end of the Did he say week, the 11th? So that that is the 12th. Yeah. April 3rd, which was uh, Good Friday, it will now be a student day. But that is the end of the third nine weeks. We're going to go ahead and make that a half a day to help the teachers get the rest there. And then the last day will be May the 25th. Knock on wood, hopefully with no more weather, uh, have the full week. Bring you to the early college and to the flex. Uh, early college, there was a March 13th work day. That is now a student day. April 3rd uh, is now a student day like like the traditional and Memorial Day May 25th uh, is also a traditional and then for the early college May 26th and May 27th two days were added to the end of their flex uh, May 25th like all the other two calendars will be a student day for, for those students in flex and then they added the days for the inter between the two sessions of March 20th 23rd that kind of brings you up to where we added the five days that were missed. Thank you, Bo. So you may have any questions in regards to those updates. We, we are trying to uh, get information out to parents as quick as possible so they can make plans as they need to. Mr. Socia, financial statements. Kathy's going to do kindergarten. Oh, we would do can Kathy with kindergarten registration. <laughs> so you got that award, Kathy. I'm sorry, just skipping over you. <laughs> oh, as you probably know, next Thursday evening, the 19th or afternoon from 4 to 7, we will have our annual kindergarten readiness rally. And this is an effort, a uh, collaborative effort among three or four different agencies within our community. Western Carolina Community Action, or WCCA, does take the lead in organizing uh, this huge event, community event, but also we're a partner with that. Children and Family Resources Center is a partner with that, as well as our Smart Start of Henderson County. We expect to have over 500 parents and students there for the event, and every Henderson County Elementary School will be there, and we'll have a table of activities for children 
children to do, to explore, and all those activities are aligned to our curriculum standards. And we also have an information table there whereby we can answer questions when parents ask, if I live here, what school will I attend? Because we do want all of our students to register at their uh, base school or their home school. Further this year, we are going to uh, ask, and when we give our book giveaway, we're going to ask parents for their names and addresses so that we can give them a postcard or a mailing before we do kindergarten registration, which is about a month in between the rally. And that way, what we're hoping to do is encourage uh, more students to enroll during that registration, three days of registration, uh, and, and increase our percentage of students who enroll there. We also want to use those mailing lists to notify our parents of some new events that we are going to be hosting this summer, some kindergarten readiness events for parents and children in the community this summer. So. Uh, please try to drop by and you can get on a big yellow bus or you can walk around and, <laughs> and see the parents and the children and meet our teachers. It's, it's a huge community event. It's, it's really grown into a wonderful opportunity for our, our families. They do like to get on that bus, don't they? <laughs> well, the parents are the... Now, Mr. Socia. <laughs> Um, just one report to bring to you this uh, this month, and that's for the local current expense and other restricted funds uh, as of February 28th. As you can see, um, for the month of February, we had revenues of just shy of $2 million at $1,995,000, and expenditures were down to $1,415,000. Um, almost a mirror of last year um, with a slight increase of $100,000 to the revenues and $50,000 in expenditures compared to last year. And for the year, that brings us to a positive balance of $1,252,000, whereas a year ago, we were at $575,000. Thank you. As far as calendar of activities and events, just, uh, of course, one, once again, the Sugarloaf Showcase. If that's something you can make, that would be great. Um, this would also give you an opportunity. You know, Dana started off doing uh, the, the Leader in Me. Sugarloaf now is doing it, and we've got other schools that are interested, and this is something we're working with the Chamber on about possibly being able to help support. So. Do we have a school for sure going to enter into the next year or not? We right now, tentatively upward, I think, is, is the one Good. the Chamber's talking to. I would point out uh, on April uh, 16th, if you get that on your calendar, for the annual Hall of Fame banquet, uh, I think that will be a great, uh, great evening, and this year it will be held at Blue Ridge Community College. You can see the other activities uh, noted there. And as far as general operations, I have none for this evening. I'd like to thank the staff and our teachers for putting up with two months of... They've done a wonderful job, and, and it's very difficult to be cognizant of all the roads. Um, but I think you did a great job, Bo. Um, it's very difficult. Anybody that's been on the roads in Henderson County more than a few minutes knows that we have different worlds in different places. But we, we go by the, the general condition. And so our, our buses run when all our buses can run. But thank you for that. And I know the teachers were jerked around too by the weather, but not much we could do. All of us like that. Chair will entertain a motion. We got a joint one. Mm -hmm. Did you get both of them? <laughs> I was having a second. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries.